Hey, what's up? So, uh, I don't know if you heard my spiel a few moments ago, but basically the enter key is squishy. It's a little soft. It doesn't feel quite how I like it. It's not smooth like, say, this shift key. So I think there is something wrong with the stabilizers, which I'm going to try to figure out what is, what, what that is today. Uh, this is going to be a little a bit more difficult to take out than I thought it was going to be. Mostly because of the keycaps, but I don't want to take them all off. Yeah, let's take these out. Dang it. Ah, this, this gets more and more complicated every time. Okay, there we go. So. Yeah, you should try to get something. So I have like this Arisu, right? This is a pretty fun and easy like custom build and you kind of do it all from the bottom, bottom up. It's also really affordable if you're looking for an, an interesting format to use, but there's a website called Nico and Steph that sells them. Well, not this exact one, but similar, similar boards. So if you're interested in that, I recommend that. It's pretty affordable. It's like a 150 USD, which isn't terrible. I, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually just looking at how the wire sits within the the housing inside the stem. From what I can see, they are a little bit wide. So what that means is that the stem the wire is pushing against the two outside points of the stem making it a little bit giving it a little more friction than i would like so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna actually take that out and i'm gonna try to readjust the wire unfortunately there's a bunch of lube on it so that's gonna be a pain but we'll do our best Mm. Do you switch mounts or do you mean like plate or, or uh, st stabilizer mounts mounting systems? So well switches always mount to like the PCB. I, I want to say that but the plate like Sorry, it's a little hard for me to explain while I'm doing stuff, but the plate holds the switches kind of in place uh just so they don't move around too much like i don't know while you're using the board so usually if you have like a hot swap board you want to have a plate just to kind of keep it stable for for a board like this you don't really have a it, it's plateless uh by design uh, so that means that you kind of have to solder the uh the, the switches into the keyboard oh man i really don't want to have to touch this uh, but yeah, I will. I'm gonna try to bend these towards each other to see if that fixes this. <laughs> yeah, I should use gloves, but I'm kind of lazy to go grab a set right now. So I'm just gonna hold it where at least it has oil. Try to gently apply pressure to make these go towards each other. And let's see. So the more frustrating thing about the, the stabilizers right now for me is that the wire is really thick. So there's not a lot of room for error. So I don't know much about GPL 205 um, But I will say any any thicker lube will be pretty solid I use dielectric grease which is not at all necessary, but it is it is nice and and definitely thick So 
So for my for my switches, I use Crytox to a five G zero, which. I mean, I only use that because I know that's like the standard for a lot of people, but there's a lot of other options. I just don't personally, I haven't explored that as much as I feel like other people have. Alex Zotos, yeah, I think, I think he uses, I don't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like other options out there. And in reality, it's like, there there isn't a whole like if there's lube that's advertised to be used for like keyboards i would say that you're you're probably gonna be like safe to use it um i wouldn't say there's a lot of things that are like oh god dang it i keep hitting the reset button <laughs> this thing sticks out so much i might have to re reprogram the board or yeah re readjust the settings again later well then, if you're using like Crytox 205, 205 then uh, it should be fine. I don't know a whole lot, so I couldn't really tell you for sure, but. Yeah, again, if it's, it's, there's not a whole lot of things that can harm your Switch. So in reality, it's just like, if you think it feels good, then it is probably fine. I know for tactiles, you usually want to use something different. Okay, let's test it out and see if it made any difference. Still a little squishy, I don't know why. So, yeah, a lot of times it it does make it harder, like these pre-build boards do make it harder to reach the stabs. They are definitely one of the harder parts to mod if you have to desolder. Usually you would, well, yours is hot swap, so I guess you don't have that issue, but. Oh yeah, so there are different kind of stabs. There's PCB mounted stabs, which is what most common are, and I feel like is most recommended. I don't know if I can explain quite why, but I think it's because PCB, oh, excuse me. PC, PCB mounted stabs sit at the same base level as your switch, which is different if you use like plate mounted stabs. They tend to sit at different heights, which is my guess as to why people usually prefer uh, PCB, uh, PCB mounted stabs over plate mounted stabs. I think that's a pretty safe guess though. I would say, I mean, it can't hurt to try to disassemble, disassemble the case, but definitely be careful. Okay, let's see if we can compare it to the space bar. Let's see why exactly the space bars are so smooth. I think lubing stabs are one of the more important mods you can do to your keyboard. That did not quite do it. Let's try something else. Yeah, I mean, there's like the holy mod, there's the Epsi mod, there's shrink wrap mod. There's several like kinds of mods you can add to kind of reduce rattle, but lubing is like the most simple form and some people prefer it because it's kind of the cleanest. Like just lubing and not doing the other things. Which I can also kind of agree with now. It's kind of, kind of frustrating to do all the other extra stuff. I have some videos on how to do like, well, I have one. I'm up, I'm gonna upload one tomorrow on how to do the uh, holy mod. Yeah, definitely. I feel like once you have built more boards, you don't feel as worried about messing with it or ruining it because you kind of just have other stuff to fall back on. I mean, I, I don't think I think once you do it, once you've built a board, you kind of have the courage to to just do it since like you've done it and you kind of know like what you need to do to, f to change things back if something goes wrong. So it's really it's really all that. It's just you got to do it at least once and you kind of get over it. But again, you know, don't don't do anything too crazy if you app, you know, you you need this keyboard to do work and whatever else. 
if it's the only thing you have, you know, don't do anything too risky, I guess, but don't be afraid to put yourself out there and try something new. Yeah, I mean, definitely, that's what I had, that's what my friend did. He basically had a board that he used for solder practice, for lubing practice, to do dummy switches he doesn't care about. He just puts it all on that board and just goes to town. But, you know, obviously, you know, if you don't have the funds to just be breaking shit on purpose, don't do that, you know. Yeah, so I put in a different set of stabilizers, not for the sound, but to see if there's a difference in feel. Oh, I think I know why. Yeah, there's, so, there's a lot of ways to troubleshoot, right? Like, you want to figure out... Is it the wire? Is it the housing? What is exactly the issue? Sorry, yeah. I'm trying to keep the mic out of the way, but it also kind of gets in the way of my arms when I'm trying to do stuff. So, the reason why these are acting up is because the I did do the holy mod on these. Which, again, there's going to be a video about soon if you want to check that out tomorrow hopefully I can get it out by <laughs> the time it's uh it's 10 30 p.m. so it is quite late right now or it's getting there I do need to edit the video still I've only recorded footage so I'm kind of behind my schedule because of this and just, yeah, again, troubleshooting, trying to figure everything out. Oh god, I'm just getting lube everywhere. Please work this time. Huh. Strange. Okay, this feels pretty smooth. And it's not even lubed. So now we know that it's the stabilizer and not the switch. Okay, so now all we gotta do is compare the difference between this stabilizer and the one that I was using. I could just use this one, but that would be a waste of a stabilizer. So first, just looking at it, they both have some tape or something inside that makes it a little bit more stiff. This isn't particularly thick compared to the Band-Aid by any means. So let's compare the shape of the wires. So, it does look like this one is still sitting a little wide. Actually, let's try something else. So, one thing we can try is putting this wire in this housing, which I see is actually much thinner. Okay, nice and tightened. So, now that I switched out the wire and not the housing, we'll find out if the problem is the wire. And then we'll need to figure out what exactly is the problem. So yes, the, pro <laughs> the problem is the wire, because this is really, really smooth. I was hoping... Uh, yeah, so the, the housing is looped, not the wire. So now... Then we know that that's the case. Let's figure out what the difference is between these two wires. I'm hoping that the biggest difference is not gonna be that. Uh, it's not gonna be the size because that's the the main thing I can't change about these the wire is is the size is the thickness of the wire. I can change the shape, but I can't change 
the thickness. So if that's really the issue, then that's going to be a huge problem. Theoretically, I could switch. <laughs> I could switch the wires and just save that one for another time, but that's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of feels bad. It's kind of feels bad. I don't want to, I don't want to have to do that. So yeah, it is thicker by a little bit. But let's lay them side by side. So it does look like there's a part here that's not quite round. It's not quite sharp enough of an angle. So it looks like what I'm gonna need to do, see if I can bend this corner in more. This is noticeably sticking out. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of like get stabilizers to work, but the only reason I know this is the case, why my stabilizers feel the way they feel, is because my first keyboard had this issue with the backspace key, with the backspace stabilizers, was that it would get caught and feel not great. So I know to look for this particular issue just from prior experience. Mm, that still feels not great. I mean, it sounds fine. It feels fine when I press right down the middle. But my issue is when I hit the corner here, it doesn't feel quite right. All right, so from what I can see, it's true. The left part right here is a little too thick or not too thick, it's curved outward too much. So I need to adjust that. Yeah, this wire being thicker is uh, it's a real pain, I'll say that much. You wanna go a little bit at a time cause you don't wanna like break the stem or not the stem, the wire. Just gently apply a little bit of pressure until it bends. I may have gone a little too far, but hey, this is the point of this whole exercise. We're gonna... Yep, okay, it's balanced. We're gonna try it, gonna see if it works. Troubleshooting is like half my regular job anyway. It's the stuff I'm good at. <laughs> hey, Charles. <laughs> I've never played Fortnite in my life. I don't know what you're talking about. Still stiff, but I think this time for the opposite reason. Again, feels fine from straight on, but the angle is just not great. What the heck is the problem? Let's try a different cap. Huh. I don't know why still like this. I thought I knew my stuff. Clearly not. Okay. Well, let's try another wire from the set then and see if it's just one particular wire or if it's every wire in these kits. In which case, I may have to write a review about these. I was mad dogging on Duroc V2s. And uh, now they seem to be the smoothest stabilizers I have. So maybe I was wrong. So I have a lot of 2U wires, more than I need. But I wanna make sure that I use the right ones. Moment of, tr moment of truth. Is it the kit or is it just one wire? Looks like it was. Yep, just the one wire. Unless. Wait, did I use the wrong one? Wait, where's the other one? <laughs> oh, it's up there. Yep, I used 
I guess for whatever reason that one particular wire so here's what I think it is and from what I can see uh, can you over torque and strip a screw with the electric? No, it's actually, it's it's not that powerful. So like if you, you know, it, it'll stop going once it's tight enough. So that's the kind of nice thing about this. I mean, but the problem is again, it's really only made for like electronics and stuff like that. So you can't use it for like anything else really. Um, but it is nice that it has that kind of control. Uh, quick question. How do you know how, how my stabs are mounted? Okay. Um, I see. You can't take it apart. No, nah, you can't use a power drill. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, how you know is if you... Let me take the, the cap off. So, you'll have a plate on top of this, like, section. It's kind of... You can't really see it, but you'll have a plate on top and essentially you'll see that there is a lip resting right on top of the plate from this now hold on let me get the focus you'll see a lip resting right on top of the plate that's a part of the stabilizer so actually you could look up like plate mounted stabilizers versus pcb mounted stabilizers and you'll you'll see a very visible difference between like what they look like one has a raised section and one is kind of just on the bottom. Okay, yeah, usually. So, unf unfortunately, a lot of like pre-built keyboards are are typically uh, plate-mounted stabilizers. I don't know why. I think it's kind of like <clears throat> because they they're built with a certain tolerance to work with their own boards. So like. Because they have that tolerance established, they can just do plate mount stab stabs instead of like PCB mounted stabs. But since like most people, when they do custom stuff, it, it needs to like match the height of the switch, they kind of typically want to stick with like PCB mounted stabs. There's too much uh, variation, I guess, between between everything. So now we know. This wire can just fuck off. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna save it in case for whatever reason it works better in another set of housings. Sometimes it's just a pairing issue. Just the way they fit with each other aren't quite right. So I should have kept it separate, but it's okay. I'll know it's the one with the bunch of scratches on it. So there's that. This one can go back on here for my video. I hope that helps like clarify. If you do end up buying your own stabilizers for a future build, uh, I do recommend getting like Duroc V2s. That is the like, it's very standard. I feel like a lot of people use it. Okay, now I've take a closer look at my steps and I want to mod it so bad. <laughs> okay, so there is, and I'll show you, I'll show you what you can do, uh, and it won't be too difficult in a sec. Um, so just hang around for a bit and I'll, now I notice the rattle. Yeah, there's, there's actually a solution for that. So just give me one sec. I'm going to lube up these wires and then I'll show you what I do. Nah, I mean, don't worry about it. There's actually something you can do that's really good without even, uh... You can't unheard. Oh, you can't unhear the rattle. <laughs> There's something you can do without needing to disassemble your board, so you're... You're in a good, you're, you're lucky right now. Your problem is not too terrible. I use dielectric grease. Again, if you don't have dielectric grease, 205 or whatever heavy, like thicker lube you have works fine. Uh, just like apply a thicker coating to the cape, to the wire. But 
I just got this because I figured it was easier and it's like cheaper. It's cheap. It's cheaper than 205. So that's why I do this. And I don't put like an overly large amount. I just put a, like a decent amount. I mean, this is kind of a lot, but you don't really need that much because I'm I'm about to show you what else you can do. You just need enough to kind of give you some some slick. Okay, cool. Now let's put these on. Then after this, I'm actually gonna I need to fix something else. I need to fix the soldering job on uh, one of my F keys because it's sitting a little loose. You can see that one here. It's a little wiggly. So I need to desolder a little bit and then just reapply. Are you interested in doing this, Michael? Is that why you're uh, watching? Or are you just curious to just learn a bit? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. By the way, I saw this is my first soldered board. And uh, I gotta say, I did a pretty good job. I did it, you know, pretty fast, actually. It's a, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to solder. I will say that. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you something, and this is for, like, anyone here that can access i get yeah yeah this does anyone here can can pretty much do this i think you most stabilizers you'll be able to do this with uh, i'm just gonna clean this up a bit so i won't i won't do this this part exactly because i've already done it uh a bit but i'll demonstrate the motions yes they are soldered switches I mean, switch, okay. So switches aren't really like, there's no, di like switches don't differ like that. There's no soldered switches or unsoldered switches. They're all just switches. It's the PCB that really like depends on what you need. Um, but yes, I soldered the switches. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Grizzlies. If you cannot take apart your board, this is what you need to do. Uh, to lube your, your stabilizer, first of all, you get a brush and you get your lube and you pull out like the stem part of the housing and you just apply some 205 or whatever you have to the sides and around the edges. So you have the outside of the stem covered. Now, once you have that, how you fix the rattle, this is gonna require that you actually do buy I mean, you don't have to buy more lube, but you will need to buy a syringe. Not like a medical syringe or anything. Sorry, my, my brother's playing some Valorant. Um, but you will get one of these. Uh, I got mine from the key company. But you get a syringe of lube. And you find the whole opening where the stem comes out of. Like where the, sorry, not where the stem, where the cable, where the wire comes out, the end of the wire. And you point this into that hole, the syringe into that hole. And you just put lube in and fill in all the gaps. And that's it. You just you take a little bit of lube and you just fill it in until it's like there's no more gaps. Uh, no. I mean, I don't know of any issues that could occur because of that. Uh, just don't like, you know, over overdo it. 
yeah just fill in the gaps and that prevents the it just if you use a th the thick of the lube the, i mean okay yeah, don't go over overly thick but you you take a thicker lube and it basically just acts as a cushion between the wire and the rest of the housing so yeah you just you just fill it in and that's kind of all there is to it <laughs> What I do, or what I used to do before I got this syringe, is I would take a brush, right? And what I would do is I would get like, or not, not a brush, I would take something flat, just something flat, and I would get a decent amount of lube on it, on the, like a screwdriver or something like that, or the end of a tweezer. And essentially I would just push the lube in. It's a little bit more tedious than obviously, you know, the syringe or whatever, but it's an option if you don't feel like buying a whole nother bunch of lube or a syringe or whatever else. So that's that's the money saver way of doing it, which works just fine. It's just a little bit more of a hassle. It's a little bit more messy. Yeah, definitely give it a shot. It's the so I learned this from, again, Alex Zotos, uh, my favorite like content creator for keyboards. If you get the chance, check out his streams. Um, it's here. I'll type his name out in the chat. <laughs> there you go. He, uh, yeah, I think he has a video about this too, but that's how that's strictly how he tunes his stabilizers. That's how he does all of them. He doesn't even do any other mods. He just kind of like Again, he, he loops the, the stem, he loops the housing, and then he gets a little bit of like dielectric grease on the, on the wire and that's about it. And after that, he just tunes it by filling in the back with, with more lube. And that's all he kind of does, it's straightforward. All right, let's test it out one more time and hopefully it feels good. That feels really good. All right, I'm happy with what we got here. Spacebar already sounds really good, so we're solid on that. And uh, yeah. This is always the worst part of this board that I have experienced right now. Is trying to get it into this freaking case. Oh, that was not good. How, how dumb would it be if like, I did all this and now the spacebar is actually. No, the speed spot's fine. Actually, now I'm tripping. Now I'm tripping. Oh, the switches? They're Zaku's. From uh, Bolsa Supply. I really like them. I recommend checking them out if you get the chance. Because they feel real good. Really, uh, really interesting. I feel like they're a, different from other linears that I've tried out there. I feel like, you know, linear is always like smooth and softer or whatever, but they actually have a very different like bottom out feel, which I really enjoy. Um, it's kind of like a trampoline ish. So I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, it's actually <laughs> the how I described it to my brother is like it's the closest you can kind of get to a tactile feeling in a linear switch. I don't know if you can hear. I mean, I guess you can. I'll, I'll, I'll give a little sound test later, but it has a nice uh, poppy like snap to it. Okay, I'm thinking of using either this as the backspace or the flux capacitor as a backspace. What do you guys think? Any preferences? This one? Yeah, that's what I was leaning to, to towards also. And there we are. It is finished. Let me 
me give you guys a little bit more of a sound test real quick. You guys, there you guys go. That's a sound test for the Thera 75. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I finished building it yesterday. I was just making some adjustments to the enter key because uh, it was feeling a little stiff. Spacebar is feeling pretty good now. I'm tripping myself out because it was fine before, and now I'm thinking there's something wrong with it. But no, it's just the the switches are a little heavier. It sounds a little scratchy, but the Zaku's are they're just like that. But I like them a lot. I recommend checking them out. Again, you can get them on Bolsa Supply. I'm not sponsored or affiliated or anything, but I really like them a lot. And the Techno Violets, honestly, if I could recommend one of the the other, that I would recommend the Techno Violets. They're they're very similar. It's just Techno Violets are lighter. But yeah, uh, I'm getting ready to build my new board, so I've been trying to find people that are making them and all that. That's good. It's good to have like a reference. I, I definitely watched a lot of videos before I started building them, and to be honest, it's all the boards are different, but it's good to get a frame of reference to what kind of mods or changes you should make that might help it. Uh, so I like the compact look, so I went with the Tofu 60. That's a good choice. And PCB and all that with a polycarbonate plate and lilac linear switches. I don't know too much about the lilacs, but that's a pretty solid like build right there. These uh, C3 equals V3 stabilizers. I like these a lot. That you can get these on TKC on the key companies and website. But so they're they're cool because they come with these like little like switch pads and stuff. Like it comes with this kit. It has like little pads that you can put in and mod and do whatever you want. It's like has everything that you could need. But my problem was that I already experienced like a small issue with the wire with one of these 2U wires where it's either too thick or it's not bent correctly so that it kind of creates a little bit of friction between the stem and the housing. Um, so there is that to keep in mind, but I just swapped it out and yeah, it's working fine now. Um, but yes, Duroc V2s are a, like a tried and true reliable stabilizer that people often use uh, with their builds. And, and most people I see building stuff online use Duroc V2s. So if, if I were to say get anything, I would probably do that. That's the most reliable. This is cool. It's very handy, but again, I, I've tried it once. There's been a small issue already that I don't really know how to fix. Um, I just switched out the, the wire. But yeah, definitely, definitely direct V2s are a safe bet. I bought lube and all that, so I'm down to get get into this. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's it's definitely a lot of fun. It's a money pit for sure, but uh, I love doing it. That's why I do this. Um, I also like to, you know, help people that are kind of getting into it. It's kind of what I aim to get out of creating all this stuff because I, I had a hard time when I started out in this hobby. There's a lot of gatekeeping and there's not a lot of information out there and just everything's kind of hard to get into. So like just having this, like all this, I think would have helped me a lot in the beginning. Um, but yeah. Thank you for, for following and for, for tuning in today. Like I hope, some of what I tell is helpful and all that. <laughs> uh, let me start the music up again. I won't be streaming for much longer because I need to start editing. I have a, a YouTube channel, by the way, um, which, uh, I, you know, I post like reviews and some, some tutorials on. So check that out if you get the chance. It's just called Wong Squared, uh, which is, you know, my Twitch name. 